Welcome back to Rebel Round Table, everybody. Hello, I'm Tristan Harley here with my good friend, my co-host, my good pal, Cooper, the juice box melder. Cooper, how are you doing, my friend? I'm doing good, but you know, speaking of juice box, I'm a little thirsty, not gonna lie. Well, hopefully next week we'll have you juice box right here at the table just for your pleasure, my oh, friend. Oh, I love it, I love it. So for those of you that don't know, no, I'm not gonna tell that story. <laughs> Anyways, we're happy to be back. We had a lot of fun in Columbus, and you know, all the way back from Columbus, we decided to do a little bit of, how do you say, expanding the team. So we now go to our news desk correspondent, Ellie Britt. Ellie, how are you doing, my friend? I'm great, how are you doing? Good. My name is Ella Jane Britt, and welcome to the Red Wolf Roundtable News Desk. The Red Wolf football team fell short this past weekend to number three ranked Ohio State, 45 to 12. This Saturday, you can catch the Red Wolves taking on the Memphis Tigers in the most play rivalry in A-State football history. Kickoff is set for 6 p.m. This game will be played in Memphis and broadcasted live on ESPN+. You can also listen to the game live on EAB Red Wolf Sports Network. Moving on to Arkansas State Volleyball, where we fell short in a four-set match against Alabama this past Sunday. Three of our Lady Red Wolves had more than 10 kills, but Alabama still managed to pull out the last two sets to finish out that four-set game. The Red Wolves are set to play Eastern Washington Friday in the SFA Hampton Inn Invitational. These A-State women's golf team traveled to Missouri State this past week to play in the Payne Stewart Memorial, where Olivia Schmidt tied for second place, making that her 11th career top five finish. Casey Sommer tied for fifth place, making that her second top five finish. That's all from the news desk for now, so let's go back to Tristan and Cooper to discuss football's loss at Ohio State this last weekend. Cooper, it was a great time at Ohio State, man. We drove, what was it, almost 12 hours on the road with Mr. Sullivan and Peyton Burr. Man, yes. that was a car ride to talk about, yes. but not on the show. But, man, we had a lot of fun. And, you know, unfortunately, we did come back with the loss. It still has a bitter taste in my mouth. I don't know about you, but, man, just what a great time it was. Cooper, how did you like the trip? What was your favorite experience? Well, obviously, my favorite experience talking about the um, trip was, you know, we got to the stadium early, you had the college atmosphere around, you know, we get checked in and then, you know, it was walking down that tunnel onto the field and just looking up where over a hundred plus thousand people sit, you know, that was, that's a memory I'll never forget, walking into a stadium like that just because you're like, you know, you've gone to Arkansas State games, you've been around, but you've never been at a I've never been at a stadium personally that can seat over 100,000 people, and that was just something in general. And then what, being able to watch the whole stadium fill up was insane. Yeah, Cooper, so you brought it up You brought it up yourself. We walked through that tunnel. We walked down the ramp. You look out, and you see just 100,000-plus empty seats. What was it, about 10 a.m.? It yeah. was probably a couple hours before kickoff. It was still cloudy. You know, the sun hasn't didn't set yet. The mood of the game atmosphere hadn't set in yet, but, man, when you got into Columbus, the first thing you thought about was, man, I want to see Ohio Stadium. I want to see the Buckeyes play in the horseshoe. And you know what? We're so fortunate that we got to be on the field. You know, once again, I just want to thank mm -hmm. everybody that made that possible. But, man, you got to look at that field atmosphere that they had, 100,000-plus screaming at the top of their lungs. I still have goosebumps in my oh, ears still sure. ringing from when Marvin Harrison Jr. got a couple touchdowns mm -hmm. and everybody started screaming. But, Cooper, Overall, what is your biggest takeaway from the trip real quick? Well, my biggest takeaway from the trip, it was just, it was a good time. And the total attendance was 100,016 people. So I'll always remember that. Yeah, Coop, well, before we get too much into it, we're going to take a short break. You'll watch Rebel Frown Table on ASU TV. ASU TV, shows like Red Wolf Roundtable, ASU TV News, Westside Football, and more. Gain real life experience while doing what you love. Get involved with ASU TV today.
Arkansas State, we want you to go. Go where learning soars, takes flight, and rockets ahead. Go for experiences, internships, and scholarships. We want you to go. Become A-State Maine. Are you ready to go? Go.astate.edu for details. Welcome back to Rebel Front Table, guys. Now it's time to dissect into the loss that Arkansas State got dealt by the Ohio State Buckeyes. Cooper, looking back at this game, what's the one thing that stood out to you the most in this loss that we had to Ohio State? You know, the thing that stood out the most was, I mean, like Butch Schoen said earlier, you'll see later on in the show, the special teams for A-State really came in clutch. You know, you don't really talk about special teams, but when you're playing an opponent like Ohio State, you can't have many errors. And on special teams, that was one of them. And a game, speaking of that man, Champ Fleming's had a game him for himself. Champ Fleming's got that dog in him. He does have that dog in him. He may be, you know, on the smaller side. I think he's about 5'6", something. Some, I don't want to offend him. You, you may be small, but you got big heart, bro. But, you know, Champ Fleming's had himself a game. And I, if we had to pick a player of the game, he's mine. Yeah, Cooper, I mean, you said it yourself. Champ Fleming had a game, really stood out the receiver position there. But now it really tests the times that maybe we didn't need a rock star after all. But, you know, Champ Fleming, he had himself a great game. He really showed that he made some big-time plays in big-time moments. So I'm glad he's on our side and not the opposing side. But, man. James Blackman was finding him every step of the way. If he was going to a dig route, he was throwing it to him. If he was taking a slant route, he was taking it to him. If he was running all the way home to Mama June's house to get some pork and beans, he was still finding him there. It was just a great game overall, Cooper. You know, like we said, unfortunately, we didn't come away with the win. But Jones, you know, he had some comments to say. But you got to look at the stats if you really want to know what went wrong for the Red Wolves. You know, they had only 53 yards rushing. Coming off the game against Grambling, they had a lot more than that. You can't have that if you want to be able to play these bigger opponents and go out and upset them like an Appalachian State did or like a Marshall did. So for Arkansas State to go in there, tour the horseshoe, and only come out with 53 rushing yards, that to me was the prime moment where we just said, okay, this is y'all's game, take, run it away with it. Yeah, and one of those, you have to think, if you were watching the game, we had two different drives where we, you know, could have had two turnovers, two intercepts two interceptions, but you know, before we get into that, let's go ahead and take a look what Butch, Butch Jones had to say about the game. A lot of respect for Ohio State and Coach Day, and uh, that's, a, that's a very, very good and very talented football team. So we knew that it would be a challenge coming in here. When you play a team like Ohio State, uh, every mistake you make is magnified. So you have to do a great job in, in not beating yourself, and I think that's what they do. They got great football players. They got really good schemes, and they force you to execute. Uh, you know, it's 17 to nine with a little over five minutes to go in the first half, and uh, we give up a score. And uh, you know, we go in at halftime. But then, you know, I didn't like the way we started the second half. Uh, I thought we lacked some intensity. And when you look at it, uh, we had two three and outs offensively to start the second half. They went with the first two possessions and went down and scored. And uh, so, <clears throat> but I will give our kids credit. You know, it's like I told our team, there are no moral victories. Um, to be the type of team that we want to be, the type of program that, that we want to be, you expect to win no matter who the opponent is, no matter where you play them. Uh, that's kind of a mindset that we're building in our football program. But I am proud of the way our kids competed. And that's what I wanted to see is what type of competitive grit would they have? And yeah, Butch Jones had a lot of great things to say. And something he emphasized on, he said, there's no moral victories. Like, at the end of the day, they played a great game, but there's no moral victories. And something that he brought up that, you know, I was kind of glad he spoke about, you know, he was comparing, last year we went to Washington and we just got absolutely killed. And they said, you know, was there any difference in the locker room from that Washington game till now? And he said, 
oh, for sure, we may have got beat 45 to 12, but you know, there's more heart in that locker room. The players are playing together. They're all, you know, buying in because, you know, I feel like last year we had too many snakes in that locker room. So good thing they went to South Carolina and Texas State. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad we don't have a rock star in our locker room no more. But the fact of the matter is this, when you go down there and you're playing these big opponents, it doesn't matter if you're a former conference player of the year. It doesn't matter if you're a former high school player of the year. you got to communicate with your team if you want to be able to come into these big games like this and even stand a chance to even get in the red zone, let alone the end zone. So for Chant Fleming, James Blackman, you know, and the rest of the team to go out there and play the way they did, I can say confidently, and I don't care what anybody on social media or anywhere around here has to say about what I'm about to say, but I am proud of the Arkansas State Red Bulls against Ohio State. I am proud, and I will say that until the day I die. Arkansas State went to Columbus as an absolute underdog, and they came out, and they came back showing that, hey, we can hang with the big dogs. We may not be able to beat the big dogs yet, but we have what it takes to communicate like a team and even put points on the board against the number three team in the country. And one thing, at one point in the game, it was 17 to nine, an eight point game. That's a one score game. And we had the ball and we could have tied it up, but you know, things happen here and there. And you know, it just wasn't our day for the upset. Right, well, you know, we're gonna take another short break. When we come back, we're gonna be talking about some Memphis, Arkansas State football. You're watching Rebel Roundtable on Arkansas State TV. ASU TV, shows like Red Wolf Roundtable, ASU TV News, Westside Football, and more. Gain real life experience while doing what you love. Get involved with ASU TV today. ASU TV, covering all your favorite sports. From Red Wolf Roundtable to Westside Football and more, ASU TV has you covered. Tune in now to ASU TV for news and coverage on these sports and more. At Arkansas State, we want you to go. Go where learning soars, takes flight, and rockets ahead. Go for experiences, internships, and scholarships. We want you to go. Become A State Main. Are you ready to go? Go.astate.edu for details. see a comeback uh, Sutherland gets away a spiral received by Jones at the 11 running left across the 15 across the 20 25 30 cuts back up field 35 40 running right across the 45 is across midfield 45 40 
again. Leonard quick drop going deep right side. It's caught. Touchdown Levi Dijonette. Touchdown Arkansas State. Oh, the fade route. One-on-one -on -one coverage and a great throw. A great catch. I'll tell you what, Star, their defensive back challenging Dijonette one-on-one. Leonard from under center. Five-step drop. Throwing right. Caught by Brown. Runs over a tackler into the end zone. Touchdown Arkansas State. They have come back from 25 down to take the lead with 7.52 to play. And you said it, he ran over the defensive player. He was supposed to have been stopped at the two yard line. He would not be denied. He took three Memphis players in the end zone with him. Hudgens quick drop, under pressure, throws over the middle, it's incomplete. Broken up by Kobe McKinnon and Arkansas State will take over on downs. They will win this football game after they were down by 25 at the intermission. They trailed 31 to 6 at halftime. They lead 35-31. Memphis is out of timeouts with 49 seconds to play. ASU, as you put a coach down to their final prayer here, they have the ball at their own 47-yard line with six seconds left, trailing by three. And you think it's Hail Mary time. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Leonard from the gun, Wilkerson in the backfield with him. Yeah, and he's gonna have to throw it a ton to get it to the end zone. Uh, third down, quick drop. Leonard rolling left, trying to buy some time. Leonard will throw it deep downfield. He's got several men down there, and it is... Touchdown. No signal! Touchdown, Touchdown Arkansas State! Touchdown, they, they have won it! No Dang flags it. on the play! How in the world did he throw that ball down there and get that out of no touchdown? Arkansas State, and this ball game is over. Arkansas it's State, time we got a break. Arkansas State has defeated Memphis on a Hail Mary pass, and I still don't know who caught it. Man. Seeing them old highlights from back in the day gives me them goosebumps. Because you know when the Arkansas State Red Bulls and Memphis Tigers play, you're in sure of a classic. Cooper, how you feeling about this game, my friend? I'm feeling good. But, you know, seeing all these, you know, you have to come back, then you have the Hail Mary miracle. But, you know, the sad thing is I don't really think we're going to have – it's not going to be a close game. Before I get into my prediction, just know A-State's going to be walking out with an easy dub. I'm already going to tell you that right there. Well, I hope when we get into Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium or the Liberty Bowl or the Trash Can Bowl or whatever bowl you want to call it, that we're walking out and we ain't walking out with the W. No, 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 no. We're walking out with a W and we're going to be singing Whoop That Trick all the way back to Jay Vegas, baby. Because we are coming and we are not backing down. Yeah, you know, Memphis ain't going to like it when old Bill Street's being run around by a bunch of Red Wolves after that victory we're going to have, you know. Memphis, they're, they say they're known for their barbecue, but it's just as mid as their football team, in my opinion, you know. St. Louis, Kansas mid. City, they got it on Memphis, but, you know, Let's talk some A-State football history against Memphis. Yeah, so you got to look at it this way, okay? Sure, when you look at Arkansas State football against Memphis in Memphis, their last win, it was in 2012 against this Memphis football program. Now, you look at Memphis. Last year, they came into Jonesboro, into Centennial Bank Stadium, inside the vault, and they won 55-50. to It was a great game. You know, I was there running the replay. It was actually my first replay gig for football. And, you know, I was being a little homer. I was being a little college football fan before I got into production mode. I was, you know, chanting for the Red Bulls, chanting for the Tigers, because my best friend goes to Memphis. You got to show love to your best friend sometimes. But look at it this way. The last time Arkansas State was able to beat Memphis was in 2012 when they won 33-28. Okay, you look at this and you look at that. We got to wonder 
you got to wonder what went wrong, what went right. You got to look at the win loss draws if you really want another trip. Arkansas State, 23 and 31 against Memphis with five draws. The five draws dating back to the 90s, 80s, 70s, 60s, 50s, 40s, and 30s. It's like backwards ladder. You go back and back and back. But regardless of that, you got to look ahead. You got to look to this game. You got to look to what you're going to do the best. And that's why when we get in Memphis this Saturday on E, you're going to see James Blackman. He's going to take the ball. He's going to throw it. You're going to see uh, Chant Fleming. He's going to run the ball all over. Uh, almost called it FedEx Park. You're going to see it. Uh, what, what's that trash bowl called? Uh, Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium. Thank you. It's not going to be the Memphis World Order. It's going to be the ASU World Order because Arkansas State's coming. And like Ed Orgeron said back in 2019 for the MLSU Tigers, we coming and we ain't backing down. Well, it's going to be such a shame when, you know, Liberty Bowl, whatever they want to call it now, when that stadium's filled up with more red than that god-awful blue they wear over down in Memphis. But, you know, like you're saying, the history, A-State may be losing in total games play, but um, this Saturday starts the 10-game win streak we're going to have against them. Yeah, Cooper. So this Saturday, when we play Tennessee's little brother, you're going to see why the Rebels are the best team in the Sun Belt. But before we get too carried away with our predictions, we're going to take another break. We'll be right back. You're watching Rebel Front Table on ISU TV. ASU TV, shows like Red Wolf Roundtable, ASU TV News, Westside Football, and more. Gain real life experience while doing what you love. Get involved with ASU TV today. ASU TV, covering all your favorite sports. From Red Wolf Roundtable to Westside Football and more, ASU TV has you covered. Tune in now to ASU TV for news and coverage on these sports and more. ASU TV News, your local source for news, weather, A-State events, and more. Tune in to ASU TV News now. At Arkansas State, we want you to go. Go where learning soars, takes flight, and rockets ahead. Go for experiences, internships, and scholarships. We want you to go. Become A-State Main. Are you ready to go? Go.astate.edu for details. Welcome back to Rebel Front Table, guys. Now, we did our dog in on Memphis. We got that out of our system. Now it's time to give our true Red Wolf predictions for this game. Cooper, in true gentleman fashion, I'll let you go first, Mr. Juicebox. What are you feeling about this game? You know, 
A-State's going to be traveling to a little town called Memphis, Tennessee. And at the end of that game, when it, if it ends around 9-30-10, A-State's going to be walking out with a dub. That dub's going to be 49-17. to <laughs> A-State going to be rolling all over those Tigers, whipping them up, sending them back to the zoo, Memphis Zoo, and locking them in a cage. Because you know what? We're going to bring the vault to Memphis, and all y'all better be out there and take over that little crappy stadium of Memphis. Man, Coop, if I wouldn't know any better, I'd think you were a Red Wolf at heart. <laughs> Man, that, that's, the, that's a good prediction. But, Coop, you got to look at it this way. You're coming in on the road. You, you, know, you know how the road is. Yeah. The road atmosphere is unlike none another. You got Arkansas State. They're coming in to a hopefully packed Liberty Bowl because that's what Memphis has been preaching. That's why they didn't get in the Big 12 because they have no fans. All these fans come out the woodwork when Arkansas, or not Arkansas State, excuse me, when Memphis is doing good saying, go Tigers, go. But the fact of the matter is this, your team, whether they win or lose, they gotta, you got to support them no matter what. That's why if I was Lee Corso right now, I'd be putting on the how head because I think Arkansas State is fixing to whoop them Tigers. Then I go send them back to the Memphis Zoo. But I think Arkansas State is going to win roughly by big estimate. But you know what? I think it's time once again that we send it back to our news disc correspondent. Ellie, my dear, how are you doing once again? I hope you're still doing good. Take it away, my friend. Personally, I just feel like we have a better offense than Memphis. I mean, the game stats are showing that. But just as a reminder, this Saturday you can catch the Red Wolves taking on the Memphis Tigers in the most play rivalry in A-State football history. Kickoff is set for 6 p.m. And this game will be played in Memphis and broadcasted on ESPN+. You can also listen to the game live on the EAB Red Wolf Sports Network. Back to you, Tristan and Cooper. Man, Cooper, I'm so happy we have Ellie here to, <laughs> to tell everybody where the game is going to be. Because honestly, I didn't know where that was going to be at. I didn't know where the game was going to be. I didn't know it was going to be on the radio. I didn't know it was going to be on ESPN+. Plus. Honestly, if it was me, I would put it on the mainframe ESPN because this game is the oldest rapper in the Mid-South. It is the rivalry in the Mid-South. It's Tennessee's little brother versus Arkansas's big brother. It's one of them games that's going to be big. And Cooper, it's going to be big. It's going to be mind-blowing because we're going to get in. We're going to dance. We're going to do our little Ray Lewis impression. And then, you know what? We're going to walk out like we've been saying with the W. You know, you're talking about the stadium. You know, they're going to pack it up. But, you know, pack up the, you know, whatever y'all want to call it and y'all change it so often. But... The sad thing is, it's going to be a bunch of red and gray. And by gray, I mean the empty bleachers when you are leaving at halftime because your team just met as your barbecue. Well, the fact of the matter is this. If you want to know how much of a dump the Liberty Bowl really is, they've got an abandoned old Coliseum right beside it where a bunch of fake wrestling used to be back in the day. Old Jerry the King Lawler used to give his old pile driver back in the Mid-South Coliseum. The Tigers used to play there. I think Penny Hardaway played there. Don't, don't uh, fact check me on that. I could be wrong. They, he probably played in the Pyramid. He's old too, and he's washed up. Uh, but really, it's just going to come down to who wants it more. You know, Seth Heinigan, Seth Hennigan, whatever his last name is, uh, He's, he's thrown for over 500 yards, and, you know, he's an exceptional quarterback. He's a great young man from Texas. I actually I met him last season when I did a little bit of scouting over there in Memphis to prepare for this upcoming game because I knew we were going. I, I manifested it. Um, but, got, man, it's going to be a great game. You know, in all, in all due respect, you know, I hope both teams have fun. I hope it's a great game. I hope you guys come out, show your support for the Rebels and Cooper. I give you some final thoughts, but you've talked enough, my friend. I think no. it's about I think it's about time that we get out of here before somebody from Memphis gets too mad at us. But guys, this has been Rebel Front Table. We'll see you guys in Memphis, and we'll see you guys next week. This has been Rebel Front Table. We hope you guys enjoyed it, and we'll see you guys next time.